Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I will record a geography in our island. I already recorded the video and then I realized that I didn't record the audio of the computer. So you couldn't hear anything of the video of course. It was worthless so I did it again and here we are on Twitter. Mm, I made a poll on Twitter. I asked you um, if you want to see um, Spain, Cuba or Ireland. Two people, two people voted for Ireland. So I will record Ireland now. It's already open in the second tab. But if you want to participate in a vote like this later in the future, just follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description. Um, I don't tweet so much, but um, maybe sometimes something, and then you can maybe um participate. So if you want, in the in the description. Now to the video. Mm. The geography now Ireland. Um. I have a few interesting things maybe to say, um, but now let's watch the video for me again, for you the first time. I hope you will enjoy it. Please subscribe from YouTube for me. I want to have 16 subscribers maybe um, in September. And if you enjoy this, just subscribe. You can also later unsubscribe again, so no worries. I often unsubscribe um, to channels I don't watch so often. Just subscribe at first. Maybe you will not regret it. Maybe you will see some interesting things in the future. If you want me to react to a certain country, also write into the comments um, or, uh, or send me something on Twitter or so, I don't know. But yeah, let's get right into the video now. Mm, yeah, let's start. Geography now, Ireland. Hey everyone, we reached the land of one eighth of my own heritage, Ireland, which means I'm probably a far off distant cousin of our favorite Irishman. Potter! For those who don't know, Potter has helped us out with many of the animations in the past, and Potter has been such a great guy, so we decided to fly Potter out here to literally be in Potter's own country's video. Potter, you rock, man. It's pronounced Potter. <laughs> it's time. It was funny. To learn geography. No! Eh, too late. I've been calling you Potter for like two years now. I'm not changing my mind. Anyway, we've reached Ireland! And I'm here to correct him if he gets anything wrong. So don't worry, lads. Yeah, that is so true, Potter. <laughs> ah, so that's what that feels like. <laughs> ah, the Emerald Isle. Europe's rain shield. The McNugget. Ireland is loaded with so many notable spots and regions. <laughs> and there's a town called Dingle. Okay. First of all, Ireland is the third largest island in Europe, located in the North Atlantic Ocean, separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, the Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. Eh, did you notice how I deliberately avoided British Isles? Uh, yeah. yeah, good call. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Ireland's subdivisions. Let's just get it over with quick and fast. So, when discussing the independent sovereign state, most people are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which makes up these five six of the island, and unless... Um, Republic of Ireland and the uh, Northern Ireland, which belongs to the Great Britain, of course, but yeah, and I just noticed something um, interesting. Um, also, um, if you um, look for um, uh, the truth has off a website uh, for Ireland, I did it, I did this a moment ago. Um, it also just marks um. Uh, it's the regions and forget some regions it's a it's a shores which i think is weird um but maybe there's something into this i'm not sure but yeah probably the republic of ireland also has this coastline and not just um the inland it would be weird if not so <laughs> um yeah let's continue mentioned otherwise this is the ireland we'll be mostly discussing in this episode to this day the last fifth northern part of ireland here is actually part of the uk and it doesn't even quite know exactly what to label itself some call it a province some say it's a region some say it's a constituent country but the point is the uk holds on to it which as you can imagine has created some interesting feelings in the past with the irish it's weird though because the people here can choose their own citizenship be it british irish or both on the west um, i would be there in this region i would definitely choose both Two, two um, uh, citizenships um, sounds for me interesting. There are a few countries I would maybe um, like to have a citizenship from additionally to the German one I already possess. Inside the North Ireland border just juts into the farmlands, ending at a small village called Manger and provides a seven kilometer wide quarter to the town of Bundoran. For so uh, here we are back again. Uh, I had to. Uh, I, 
I was forced to stop the recording or the pause the recording for a while. Now I forgot where we stopped. Um, with this little corridor. Um, yeah, let's just continue. I, if I had said something before and it doesn't make sense now that I stopped. I'm sorry, I don't remember what I, where we stopped. So let's continue. For the rest of the Republic to enter into Donegal County. And then you have the strange Penny Enclave right across the Finn River, with only a tenth of a kilometre wide entrance that Ireland grabbed and is still part of Monaghan County. This, in return, gave a small exclave to the UK, an unnamed patch of land with only three small farming homes. The only way to get in besides swimming across the river would be by taking the most name switched international road on the island, the Irish N54, which turns into the A3 highway once you cross into Northern Ireland. Then it switches back into the N54 once you cross into the exclave. Then it reverts back to the A3 again for about two kilometers and then back to the N54 once you cross back into the Republic of Ireland. So literally it's like Irish, British, Irish, British, Irish. Or as I like to call it, my day. <laughs> um. <laughs> also, the UK was like, eh, instead of following the Foyle River all the way up to the Foyle Lock, why don't we just swerve left through the farmland to take the entire city of Derry? Because, hey, logic! Basically, to an Irish person, the entire island of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, is just Ireland. So, if you consider the administrative divisions, the Republic of Ireland is divided into 26 counties. However, many also include the extra six from Northern Ireland and call it 32. But then there's the two city and county councils, Limerick and Waterford, and the three city councils, Dublin, Galway and Cork, making 31 local authorities in the Republic of Ireland, and technically 37 again if you include Northern Ireland's counties and the capital of Dublin. Sounds about right. Okay, yeah, Woo. I got that right. Woo. Historically though, Ireland was also kind of split into four provinces that many people still refer to today. They are Connacht, Leinster, Munster, and Ulster. Northern Ireland. Um, and also his accent, um, probably an Irish accent. Um, it's English. It's clearly to understand English, but um, yeah. You hear also very clearly that it's not normal English from Great Britain, maybe, but it's and it has an accent, and yeah, but it's nice. Ireland is often referred to as Ulster, as it encompasses most of the counties that make up the historical province. Otherwise, the largest cities after Dublin are Cork and Limerick, with the largest airports being Dublin, Cork, and Shannon airports. Keep in mind, if Northern Ireland was included in this, Belfast would take the number two spots on each of those lists. In addition to being an island itself, Ireland also hosts hundreds of smaller little islands and islets. The most populated ones being Great Island by Cork, Achill Island in Mayo, and Grumna and the Iron Islands in Galway. Finally, some places of interest across Ireland might include places like Trinity College, the Guinness Storehouse. The Neolithic Tomb. Um, this is interesting. Um, I mean, he was held also in a moment, but yeah, it seems to be older than the Pyramid of Giza. But that's what he is saying in the moment. But it looks definitely interesting, like a um Hügelgrab. It's called in German. It's a maybe a hilly grave. I don't know if it's a the literate, literately translation makes sense in this moment. Tomb of Newgrange, which is older than the Pyramids of Giza, the Rock of Cashel, Glendalough and Wicklow, the Blarney Stone of Cork, that island that was filmed at the, the end of Star Wars. Ah, uh, yeah, um, I, I watched this episode. I haven't watched the uh, ninth episode. Maybe I will do it in the future someday, but I watched this one. I don't know, it, probably it's the first one, it's the first of the last three, so the seventh one. It's called Skellig Michael. Tory Island, which kind of has like its own king. Scotia's grave, where an Egyptian princess is buried, supposedly. I didn't know about that one. You didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah. I just found it off of Atlas Obscura. The Mound of Hostages. The Cade Fields. The Sky Garden. Hookhead Lighthouse, the oldest continuously used lighthouse still operating in Europe. So you live right next to it. Yeah. Sean's Bar, the oldest surviving pub and possibly the entire world. And of course, way too many churches, abbeys, castles, dolmens, tombs, everything else to list. Way too many of them. Way too many of them. Oh, and avoid Temple Bar, right? In Dublin. That Okay, avoiding it? Why? Um, is it? I have to. I have to listen to it. <laughs> the reason. It's like a tourist trap, and you can't actually meet any real Irish people there. It's just don't go there. Don't yeah, go to Temple Bar. Give it a miss. Go to Coppers. Coppers. Yeah. Ah, beer. You guys know your way around the pint, don't you? Oh well, Irish people do, but I don't actually drink. Oh, okay. Huh. After that, man, I killed. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Ireland is very green. The end. Um, by the way, um, uh, by the way, green, um, uh, the how you can difference between the flag of Ireland and the flag of um Ivory Coast. I know they want to call themselves Cote d'Ivoire, 
I hope I pronounce it not too terribly. But um, the difference is, um, I mean, how you can um, the, is, um, guess the right flag. So Ivory, the um, Ivory, the Irish flag has the green first from left to right. And the other one, is the same colors, but in a different order. I'm not sure exactly what color comes first in the Ivory Coast flag, but the Irish flag is the first color green because the Irish people love green. St. Patrick's Day and so, you know. I had this tip from another YouTuber, maybe about GeoGuessr or in another video about flags or so, I'm not sure. Uh, Alright, so there's a little bit more to it than that. Ireland is a post-glacial carved mineral and sandstone island with about 12 small mountain ranges, the majority of which are located in the north, west and south. You'll notice looking at the map that the east coast of Ireland seems to be relatively smooth and straight, whereas the west coast of Ireland seems to be all choppy and serrated with inlets and peninsulas. Almost like if you took a ball of clay and just spread it across a flat surface in one direction. <laughs> one direction. Anyway, the tallest peak is Mount Carntool at about a thousand meters, and the longest and most important river being the River Shannon, and a large lake on the entire island being Loch Ney in Northern Ireland. However, if we're talking about the Republic of Ireland, the largest would be Loch Corrib in West Galway. The west side is also home to the most notable natural landmark, the Cliffs of Moher that rise about 120 meters straight up from the ocean. Otherwise, you have the Sleeve League Cliff a bit further up north and into the UK's Northern Ireland. Um, uh, this looks very nice, those cliffs. Um, probably it's far too dangerous to jump from them. I would ne never do this or never... It sounds stupid. But it looks um, uh, nice, the cliffs. Very nice. You, still, you have the Giant's Causeway, a series of hexagonal volcanic plug steps that just jut into the ocean side. I love how you say that. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. <laughs> hexagonal. 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 Now, despite being located fairly north in latitude, Ireland actually experiences a strange weather phenomena in which it actually kind of acts like a rain shield for the UK. It takes all the warm air released by the North Atlantic Gulf Stream that starts all the way from the Caribbean. This means that although Ireland is on the same relative latitude as Newfoundland, Canada, they remain about 9 degrees Celsius or about 17 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, rarely reaching the freezing point, which in return means they hardly ever get snow. However, that again in return means Ireland gets a ton of rain like seriously over half the year is drenched you only get like two months of sunshine and then it's back to the downpour I mean wouldn't that make you guys like kind of depressed what do you think drinking's a thing in Ireland? Speaking of which, the abundance of rain allows Ireland to actually flourish in flora and agriculture, giving it its trademark green colour. Common crops being spuds, sugar beets and grains like barley, oats and wheat, which as you can uh, Potatoes is also something, I mean they grew a lot of potatoes I think and there was this one um, time in Irish history when potatoes were not growing and uh, people uh, starved and the UK um, literally um, didn't do anything or even took the potatoes which were growing um, and let the people starve and people fled to the United States of America so this period of time there is a video about this um, from Gravel Institute and um, maybe I will link it, link it in the description where also the link to my Twitter account is, please follow me there and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please do so. Six subscribers, um, four subscribers more, and I would have 16 subscribers. It would be awesome. You can do this. Please. Imagine it has a large portion that goes towards Ireland's most famous product, beer. Beer! Ireland without beer is like Mexico without tacos, Koreans without kimchi, Argentinians without salsa, Bob Saget without his telekinetic laser vision. Yeah, beer culture is such an integral part of being Irish that even priests and nuns get in on the action and share a pint of Guinness. Which, by the way, the Bible never condemns alcohol, just drunkenness, so know your limits. Yeah, we go to confessional a lot. Otherwise, some top notable Irish dishes might include things like... Box tea. Potato bread. Brown soda bread. Bacon and cabbage. Too many suits to list, like coddle and Irish stew, black pudding, oysters and Guinness. And overall, you can find potatoes cooked in various ways with like everything. In addition, Ireland is also the perfect habitat for about 26 species of mammals like the red fox, European hedgehog, the stoat, pygmy shrew, and badger. And the one land reptile that is Always with like everything. In addition, Ireland is also the perfect habitat for about 26 species of mammals like the red fox, European hedgehog, the stoat, pygmy shrew, and Oh, it looks very cute. Very tiny and um, very um, sweet. Um Maybe a perfect something.
Badger, and the one land reptile that is native to the country, the viviparous lizard. Speaking of which, no, the story of St. Patrick driving all the snakes out of Ireland was probably not true. Ireland most likely never had snakes due to its geographic isolation from the rest of Europe, and also St. Patrick probably wasn't Irish, he was Welsh. Yeah, lots of misconceptions when it comes to Irish people, <laughs> which brings us... This is, um, that he was in fact maybe Wales, um, so it's interesting. He, um, kind of seems very famous for Ireland. Two. Hey, so Potter, I... <laughs> Uh, sorry, patter. So what does it mean to be Irish? Oh, we're all about the crack in Ireland, so we are. Yeah, crack, uh, what, crack, crack? Crack every day and night of the week. We love the crack, so we do. DA freeze, has more, I can see them. Oh, common misconception. See, we're not actually talking about drugs, we're talking about- Resist the arrest. We're not- uh, No! <laughs> First of all, Ireland has about 4.8 million people, over 6 million if you include Northern Ireland, and has the highest birth rate in the EU. About 83% of the country identifies as ethnically Irish, whereas about 9.5% are white of other nationalities, whereas the remainder of the country is other groups like Asians, blacks, and who knows, probably some magical wizards or something. So the country uses the Euro as their currency, they also use the Type G plug outlet, and they drive. On the left side, say, is this, I mean, okay, for me, the most um, different um, kind of things. Electricity where you put the things into the plug-in um, looks weird, which I don't know here from Germany, but on the left side, that's interesting. On the left side of the road. Now, thanks to modern media, everyone probably has at least a little bit of exposure to the stereotypical Irish culture one way or another. You know, like river dance or leprechauns or river dancing leprechauns. But there's an entire world to the deep-rooted Irish identity. First of all, the language. Technically, Ireland, or at least the Republic of Ireland, is a bilingual country that uses both Irish and English, although English is used far more often than Irish ever is. The Irish language is related to other Celtic-based languages spoken in Scotland, Wales, and to some extent, Brittany in France. Just when you thought you were safe after the Iceland episode, Irish comes along and suddenly M and H make a B sound, yeah. D and H make a G or Y yeah. sound, B, H and F sometimes make like a W sound. Mm. Alright Paul, let's see you take a shot at saying these words. Alright. R I I G L A T. Nope. R I G L A T. It means go on. Tav talk. Uh, nice try. It's talk duck. It means important. Letras. Nah. Lehers. It means toilet. Fail nacht. Actually, that was just one I made up. But nice try. <coughs> For a long time, the language was suppressed and discouraged by the English speaker. I don't think that I would have, I would be, have been able to pronounce any of these words. Rulers to the point where a couple of generations were greatly affected and grew up barely knowing their own native tongue. Today, the language has seen a huge resurgence and is one of the core subjects in most primary and secondary schools. Although less than half the population claims to be fluent in Irish and only a few communities actually speak it regularly in daily life, the Irish language is still survives into the 21st century. All the public signs are posted in both languages. They even have an Irish speaking TV channel, radio station, and even an online newspaper. In order to get a real feel of Ireland, though, you kind of have to know a little bit of history, which will take Way too long to explain, but in the quickest way we can put it... Stone Age. Celtic culture comes in. Chiefdoms. High Kings. Christianity. Vikings. Normans. Castles got built. Black Death. Henry VIII split from the Catholic Church and attacked. Ulster Plantation and quasi-English rule Oliver Cromwell. Wars. Theobald Wolfe, who led a failed rebellion. Potato Famine. Tons moved to the US and Scotland. Gaelic Revival. North doesn't agree. Conflict and persecution against Catholics. Home Rule. Home Rule suspended. World War I, Eastern Rising. IRA fights. Irish Civil War. Free Staters won. World War II, they remain mostly neutral. 1969 Civil Rights marches. Northern Ireland gets more drama. They join the EU. Good Friday Agreement. Celtic Tiger. Financial crisis. But they still grow and move forward. And here we are today. As mentioned, the largest ethnic group of people in Ireland, the Irish, come from a long line of people known as the Celts. Um, here we are back again. Or the Celtic. It's Celtic, Boston. Celtic. Not Celtic. Thousands of years ago, the Celts roamed all across continental Europe. However, the rise of empires and warring people groups kind of pushed them all the way west into the Isles. And the Celts had an incredibly complex system of tribes or clans and families that dominated certain regions with their own chiefs and kings. This is partially why so many people in Ireland have Mech, or the, the almost exclusively Irish used O prefix, prefixes in their last names, which translates to son or descendant. Send it. Prior to Christianity, Celts were primarily farmers and cattle herders with pagan and druid roots. With some controversial practices recorded by the Romans. Uh, Christianity came in and then Catholicism played a huge role even to this day. However, certain ancient traditions still lived on, like the festival of Sabin? 
sound. So, really? What? I thought M and H make a V sound. Nah, it depends. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Ugh, your language. Sound later became known as Halloween, which became popularized and is celebrated all across the world today. However, originally they used to use turnip lanterns, not pumpkins. Folklore and tradition is strong. We've all heard of leprechauns, but there's also Fionn McCool and the Fianna of the Fenian Cycle, Cucullin the Hound, Dearbill and Grania, similar to the Princess Isolde and Tristan in Arthurian legend, and so much more. And the two most popular sports, which are almost never played anywhere else in the world, Gaelic football and hurling. Oh yeah, that's like a Irish uh, Quidditch or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't call it Quidditch. Oh yeah, this is a hurl. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. How do you play with that? Why don't we ask Jason Statham? <laughs> Speaking of which, there is no universal Irish <laughs> accent. You get different uh, dialects from different regions. For example, Moses Tasser thinks he's great. Now he's on YouTube, I'll wrap this hole round his neck. Big fat head on him. Well, I came home on a Monday night. As drunk as drunk could be. I don't know who you are or where you are. And I will find you. I returned this wallet. Dude, thank God you came here because I would have offended the entire country and gotten stabbed within hours of upload if I attempted that. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, some famous people of Irish descent might include people like Oscar Wilde, James Joyce, Bram Stoker, Samuel Beckett, chemist Robert Boyle, Graham Norton, Terry Wogan, the Irish PewDiePie guy, U2 and Bono, the script, <laughs> the Dubliners, Phil Linnett, who I incorrectly refer to as, yeah, of course, um, Jack Septicai, I also know. Billy not in the Guyana episode. Sorry about no that. Worries. The Cranberries. Enya. Hosier. The Rubber Bandits. The dude from One Direction. Colin Farrell. Killian Murphy. Brendan Gleeson. Saoirse Ronan. I got that! Nail it. <laughs> Maureen O'Hara. Richard Harris. Uh, Northern Ireland. Liam Neeson. And Michael Fassbender is half Irish, so I guess it kind of counts. Yeah, yeah. Some guy called Conor McGregor. Yeah, uh, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Oh, and according to that one Malaysian guy from Flag Friday, Westlife and Boyzone. Otherwise, we could go on and on about the rich, complex layers of music, dance, literature, symbolism, artifacts, traditions, festivals, clothing, customs, and legends. But that would take way too long, and if you want to know more, just watch any episode of Fair City or Father Ted. Or you could just, like, talk to an Irish person as well. Nah, TV's better. TV never gets anything wrong. Sure. In the meantime, Ireland's friend zone in 3, 2, 1. Um, I predict that they get along with Great Britain, but probably they have also some, you know, difficulties maybe sometimes about the past. No matter where you find them in this world, you know you're gonna be lucky when you find an Irishman. First of all, as an EU member state, Ireland has strong ties to many of their continental neighbours, specifically to Catholic countries like France and Spain. The French and the Irish have a long history of joining up in the squabbles against the British. And about 60% of students in secondary school learn French. Spain is not only close and does good business, but it's also the number one tourist destination for the Irish, as about a quarter of their entire population visits at least once a year. Surprisingly, the Lithuanians have been flocking to Ireland since the 90s, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Union and make up the third largest immigrant group after the British and the Polish. But keep in mind, the Polish, they like go everywhere, so it's no shocker. I mean, remember how they made up like 8% of Iceland's population? Mm -hmm. Now, despite the past drama, Ireland gets along pretty well with the UK. A lot of their imports come from them, and the Irish are an almost integral part of the common British atmosphere, as so many of them live there. And nonetheless, the best friends of Ireland would actually probably be Scotland in the UK and the USA. Scots and the Irish are Celtic brothers that have shared cultures since the beginning, as well as some of the same strifes and struggles. Tons of Irish moved to Liverpool after the potato famine and were generally welcomed by their cousins. I mean, horrible accents aside, have you seen that one scene in Braveheart where the Irish mercenaries backstab the British and join their Scottish cousins? Yeah, like that, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. The USA, though, is like their favorite younger cousin who is a lot bigger and stronger. Not only do about 30% of their exports go to the US, but after the potato famine, hundreds of thousands of Irish came flocking into Ellis Island, and to this day, about 35 million Americans claim to have either partial or full Irish heritage. The largest concentrations on the East Coast in New England. That's about seven times the population of Ireland itself. It even got to me somehow. Thank you, Grandpa I never met. In conclusion, I'm actually gonna give this to you, man. Take it away. Thank you, Paul. In conclusion, Ireland has had to Conor McGregor its way through war, famine, economic recession, terrible leprechaun rapping, and Gerard Butler's horrible accent in p mm. P.S. I love you. Seriously, man, you're Scottish. It shouldn't be that hard. But through all that, we've managed to be the coolest kid on the block. Despite a few emotional issues here and there, we're pretty rad, if I say so myself. Go on, Ireland, you beautiful, drunken mess of a nation, you. And you know what? In honor of your 1-8th Irish lineage, I've decided to bestow on you the title of kind of Irish, I guess. Here's 1-8th of an Irish shamrock hmm. tied on with a piece of sellotape. Wow, thanks. Potter, even though I got <laughs> the name wrong, so, yeah. You do. Oh. Title revoked. No! No! No, okay, come on. We've been through this. Okay, so it's, it's like, ladder, but pa patter, right? Patter. Patter. Right? Patter? Better. Okay. 
score. Stay tuned. <laughs> Israel is coming up next. <laughs> so maybe maybe also react to Israel. It will probably be also um a controversial episode or reaction. But there are a lot of a lot of things to tell about Israel. And maybe I will do it one day. And um, please subscribe for my channel. Let me have 16 subscribers soon. Um, if you're still watching and not already skipped to the end, so um, I don't know what country comes next. So decide yourself by writing into the comments what you want to see, and maybe I will do it. See you next time.